Hello everyone, how are you today? This is Mark. I'm doing just great. Thanks for asking. Do you often watch my lessons on YouTube? Never will I give up making these lessons. Had he known before about her accident, he would have come to visit her at hospital. Next to them stood a pile of books they needed to review. So happy were they in 2012 that they got engaged. In this lesson, we're going to talk about inversion, so stay tuned. One of you have asked me to talk about inversion. But what is inversion? Inversion is defined as putting the verb or the auxiliary verb before the subject. Let's take a look at um, all the forms we have of inversion. The most common one is the first one, in question forms, okay? So, like in my example, do you often watch my lessons on YouTube? Do you often? Obviously, the positive sentence would be, I often watch your English lessons on YouTube. The subject goes first in a positive sentence, right? And then the verb goes after. Remember that when we make a question in the present simple tense, we need to put an auxiliary before, right? So, do you, and this is where inversion comes, do you often watch? Does she often watch? Etc., etc. Now, I have other examples for you. So, with the present perfect, have you visited Rome? Have you visited Rome? Here is the inversion. The positive sentence would be I've, auxiliary verb have, I've visited Rome. The other example that I listed, are they listening to me? This is with the present continuous. The positive sentence would be, they are listening to me. So, they are, the auxiliary verb to be, are, in this case because it's the third person plural, so they are listening to me. The inversion comes, are they listening to me, in a question form. So, this is the first type and the most common type of inversion. The second type is with negative adverbs or adverb phrase at the beginning of a sentence. Used to give emphasis to the adverb, making it sound more unusual and thus more formal. Like in my example, never will I give up making these lessons or these English lessons on YouTube. You can see right here we have a negative adverb never. Never, then we have the auxiliary verb will. I decided to talk about uh, the future. Never will I, and here is the subject. So the auxiliary verb and the subject, and then give up the phrasal verb making these English lessons on YouTube. So the adverbs or uh, the uh, negative adverbs that we use with the inversion are scarcely. No sooner, only then, little, rarely, no way, seldom, hardly, etc. Hardly ever, etc. I said that you have to pay close attention because some other phrases, the inversion comes after. And these are only when, only after, not since, not until. There are others, but we are going to concentrate just on these four. So the example that I uh, wrote here is only when he first saw her, here comes the inversion. Did he understand, did he understand his love for her? So the inversion is right here, auxiliary verb, did, then we have the subject. And then the verb, um, the infinitive verb, because obviously I added did before, so I made the sentence in the past. So, did he understand? Do not make the mistake to say, did he understood? No. 
Did he understand? So infinitive verb or the base of the verb. Did he understand his love for her? Let's look at the other forms now. There are other three situations where we can use inversion. The first one, in conditionals. That's right, in conditional sentences to, th to make them more interesting. Don't forget though that we don't use if at the beginning if we use inversion. So this is done with had, should, were. Let's look at my introductory example. Had he known before about her accident, he would have come to visit her at the hospital. So obviously right here we have had, okay, which is the auxiliary verb of the past perfect, and uh, I invert it with the subject, he. So had he known, and this is the past participle of the verb to know, before about her accident, he would have come to visit her at hospital. What type of conditional is this? This is the third conditional. Another type of situation where we can find inversion is with adjuncts or adverbial expressions of place to sound more formal. Like in my example, next to them stood a pile of books they needed to review. So we have the verb stood or stand and then a pile of books which is the subject. How would it sound normally? A pile of books they needed to review stood next to them. That's it. But to sound more formal and more sophisticated, we can say we can say next to them stood a pile of books they needed to review. Let's look at another example. On the ceiling hangs a fan. So hang is the verb and a fan is the subject. So to sound less formal we could say a fan hangs on the ceiling. That's it. <laughs> okay, and the final uh, inversion or situation where we can find inversion is with so plus adjective plus that. Like in my example. So happy were they in 2012 that they got engaged. You can see right here so happy is the uh, so plus adjective, happy, were, is the auxiliary verb, okay, in this case is a full verb, and then the subject, they. Another example, so good was the pizza, <laughs> yeah, so good was the pizza, that everyone ate it in a jiffy. In a jiffy means really quickly, okay, this is an expression, in a jiffy, really quickly. So now, let's recap. In this lesson, we talked about inversion. What is inversion? It's putting the verb before the subject. That's it. Sometimes it's used to sound more formal or sophisticated. We talked about five situations where we can find inversion. Naturally, the first one is in question forms. With negative adverbs or adverbial phrases, conditional sentences replacing if, with adjuncts or adverbial expressions of place and with so plus adjective plus that. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your, all your comments and all your suggestions and your own example. Obviously, if you want, you can type your own example under this video. Please share the lesson and uh, I see you next week with a new lesson. Take care. Bye-bye.